Well, I, I certainly agree with the points which uh, Kishore uh, Ambassador Mabutani has just made. Uh, and I've also looked through the book. I certainly recommend the book to uh, viewers. Uh, I myself, of course, for years, I've agreed very much that we have a global transformation underway. Uh, the first book that I did while I was uh, together with Roy Hoffheins at Harvard University back in 1982, uh, The East Asia Edge, uh, we were talking also about a global transformation, about the, uh, re the uh, uh, revival once again of the world that exactly as he mentioned, uh, Asia had been at the center historically and that that world uh, after the important and creative interlude of the industrial revolution and uh, many of the difficulties since that we are returning to uh, an earlier era. Of course, I do believe, I'll come back to this, that there's a key role uh, for the United States. It's a key power today. It will continue. I believe there's fundamental strengths, America's technology, uh, food supply, uh, energy supply, creativity. There are many enduring strengths that will continue to give it a role, but the world that we will live in certainly has many characteristics of the world that Ambassador uh, Mabubani uh, is laying out uh, in his book. Um, I can remember visiting um, uh, Shenzhen in 1978 and coming out of the station and there was virtually nothing there. And then of course, just before the pandemic, I was back in Shenzhen again in the home of much of China's great technology, skyscrapers already, a, a, a huge city. I could hardly believe the transformation. And I see this time and time again as I move to the cities of Asia that I've, I've seen really since the time I was a boy. I was in Hong Kong when I was eight. And then going back and seeing how different, or Singapore, of course, and you haven't mentioned Singapore in detail, but certainly it's a, a extraordinary uh, place as well. I've written about that. I was glad to see um, Kishore mentioning in his discussion of the rise of Asia, of course, China, but also Japan and the remarkable story of Japan's transformation of going back to Meiji. Of course, there were dimensions that the world regrets and Japan regrets as well, the militarism and all, but certainly the important potentially constructive role uh, that Japan can play in this major transformation in world affairs. Um, I, we keep drawing the dichotomy of Asia and the West and fundamentally in the sense that Kishore has talked about that, uh, talking about the huge share of mankind which is outside the West. This is certainly the case. I do think a piece of this transformation, and I'm sure Professor Brown will come back to this, also is uh, important transformations across the continent of Eurasia. Uh, China's rise, uh, to me, is really a remarkable thing that uh, shows is right, right at the heart of this global transformation. But uh, no doubt it's also been magnified by the collapse in the early 1990s of the uh, Soviet Union, the uh, transformation more broadly of the continent. The end of the Cold War uh, also, of course, created a different Europe uh, and the extension of the European Union and uh, other and NATO and so on considerably to the east and deepening ties in the last decade across the continent between particularly China and, um, and Germany, but uh, with the AIB and so on at an important point also with Britain. And so uh, there are certainly complexities, but the transformation of many parts of the world, not only Asia, also have to do with this significant global uh, transformation that's underway. And I do hope as we move to the future, I think it means exactly what uh, Ambassador Mababani has 
pointed out, it means a world which certainly is not unipolar and the bipolar dimensions, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the United States and China certainly together have important roles, but there's tremendous instability as we have recently seen in, in that dynamic. I certainly hope for a world in which uh, China and the United States can have a more stable and constructive relationship. But I think that is in the context of exactly what uh, uh, Professor Mabubani mentioned, namely of a broader um, multilateralism that recognizes the role of other uh, major global uh, powers and, and also the transnational dimension um, entities beyond nation states and the very constructive role that uh, creative uh, uh, states that understand the broader system exactly like Singapore, but certainly um, others that understand the system as a whole and don't have a stake in just uh, uh, some form of hegemony. I think all of those things are, are going to be uh, crucial to the future, and I look forward to our discussion today.